dear students welcome to the basics on ordinary differential equation you have already studied ordinary differential equations in your school days just a quick recap few definitions which is needed for our problem do you remember suppose y is a function of x that means y is my dependent variable and x is going to be my independent variable so y is depending on x now from this i can do the derivations dy by dx d square y by dx square d cube y by dx cube goes on if i am taking u is a function of x y z here u depends on x u depends on y as well as u depends on z u is my dependent variable and x y z are my independent variables so if more than one independent variable is there in a function then we have to differentiate differentiate partially like this do u by do x do u by do y do u by do z etc a differential equation is an equation which involves one dependent variable suppose say y and its derivatives dy by dx d square y by dx square etc if it has only one independent variable if it has more than one independent variable it have partial derivatives a differential equation is said to be ordinary differential equation it should have exactly one independent variable suppose say x and a dependent variable and the derivatives of the dependent variable next we are going to see what is mean by the order of a differential equation the order of a differential equation is nothing but the highest order of the derivative of the dependent variable see this example the highest derivative is 2 therefore the order is going to be 2 now we'll take one more example here the highest derivative is 1 therefore the order of the differential equation is 1 next degree of a differential equation degree of a differential equation is the power of the highest derivative you take one example now the highest derivative is d square y by dx square and the power of the highest derivative is 3 therefore we say it as degree is 3 similarly now you see the highest derivative is d square y by dx square but the power is going to be 1 therefore we say the degree is 1 hope you understand now what is mean by a linear differential equation a linear differential equation is a equation in which the dependent variable suppose you say y equal to f of x y is my dependent variable so if the dependent variable and its derivatives so y dy by dx d square y by dx square etc occur with first degree see here here the degree is 1 here also the degree is 1 the degree is 1 so a linear differential equation is a equation in which dependent variable and its derivatives occurs with first degree and there should not be a products of dependent variable or derivatives of the dependent variable if you find a equation like this then it is known as linear differential equation otherwise it is known as non linear differential equation see this differential equation here the power of second derivative is 1 here also the power of first derivative is also 1 and power of y is also 1 and it does not have any multiplication of dependent variable as well as its derivatives therefore this is a linear differential equation but now see this second example the second derivative as power 3 so this can't be a linear differential equation this is non linear and this is linear now you should get a clear idea about what is mean by linear and non linear differential equations now we are going to write the general form of the nth order ode that means i am differentiating y n times now we can see this a not a1 a2 etc an are going to be constant provided a not is not equal to 0 because if a not is 0 then the highest power will become n minus 1 it will become an n minus 1 th order linear ordinary differential equation so it is very important a not should not be equal to 0 next we deal with the right hand side q of x if q of x is equal to 0 then i can write this equation like this let us take this as equation 1 and when right hand side is 0 then we take it as 2 the equation 2 is known as homogeneous equation of equation 1 now we are going to find the general solution of the homogeneous equation first of all let us find the general solution for the homogeneous equation 2 for this i am going to consider my left hand side because my right hand side is 0 the general solution for this homogeneous equation 
is nothing but my complementary function of equation 1. Now, we give the notation for the complementary function either Cf or Yc. So, the general solution for the equation 2 has n arbitrary constants. A solution is said to be a particular solution if it does not contain any arbitrary constants. So, now in the previous slide, we see the general solution for equation 2. Now, we are going to see the general solution for the equation 1 whose right hand side is q of x. Let us see if y p is the particular solution for the equation 1, then the general solution is already we see when my q of x is 0, the general solution is going to be complementary function for equation 2. But now q of x is non-zero and it has a particular solution y p. So, for left hand side we have y c that is complementary function. Therefore, the general solution is going to be y c plus y p or we can take it as c f plus p i complementary function plus particular integral. Note the general solution of an ordinary linear differential equation is also known as the complete solution. Next, we are going to find the complementary function for the given differential equation. To find Cf, first we have to make the auxiliary equation corresponding to equation 2. First, let me take this equation 2. Uh, this is not good. I am writing in this form. Capital D, D by dx. D square, D square x by dx square, etc. When I write like this and replace in equation 2, I will be getting the equation like A naught capital D power N, A1 capital D power N minus 1, etc. An and I am taking Y in common. My right hand side is 0. Now, to find the solution, I am going to find the auxiliary equation by putting d equal to m in this equation 2. When you put d equal to m, then we get a new equation of power n. Now, solving this equation 3, we will be getting n roots. That is my m1, m2, etc., mn. Now, I don't want to make things complex. I just take second order differential equation. So, it is look like a into capital D square plus b into capital D plus c into y is equal to g of x. To find the complementary function, first make my right hand side 0 and then put d equal to m. When you put d equal to m, we will be getting a m square plus b m plus c equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. It has at most two roots. What is the meaning of at most two roots? Suppose I have two different roots. So, two. Sometime I have roots are repeated. They are same. So, it has at most two roots. Now, if you take the roots are m1 and m2. Since it has at most two roots, there are three options here. First one is m1 and m2 are real and distinct. They are two different. Then people say it as real and distinct or real and unequal, etc. Next, the other chance is real and equal. They may be the same. And the third chance in the quadratic equation is it may be a complex root. We know complex root occurs always in pair. So, these are all the three chances for a quadratic equation. You can extend this for cubic etc. up to nth order equation. Now, let us see what is my CF, complementary function, when the roots are real and distinct. That means my M1 and M2 are not equal. If they are not equal, then CF is going to be A e power M1x plus B e power M2x. This is going to be my complementary function if the roots are real and distinct. So, you can extend this. For example, if M1, M2, M3 are three different roots, so I can write it as e power M1x plus B e power M2x plus C e power M3x. Next, if the roots are real and equal, so here we consider quadratic equation. It has two roots, M1 and M2. If the roots are real and equal, let me consider this as M. Now, the complementary function for this real and equal roots are AX plus B into e power mx. Suppose if you have three roots, say m1, m2, m3, if all are equal, m1 equal to m2 equal to m3, I will consider again this as m. Now, three roots are equal. Obviously, you can say the complementary function. It's nothing but ax square plus bx plus c e power mx. This is the case for three roots are equal and this is the case for two roots are 
equal finally when the roots are imaginary or if the roots are complex then always we get the roots m is equal to alpha plus or minus i beta they always occur in pair and my solution is going to be e power alpha x so i am using this alpha here e power alpha x into a cos beta x i am applying the beta here a cos beta x plus b sin beta x this is my solution for the roots are complex hope you understand the basics and how to find cf now the right hand side deals with the particular integral pi so we can simply say it as rhs your rhs may be e power ax or it may be sin ax or cos ax or it may be tan ax or it may be secan ax etc or it may be a polynomial now how to find the solution for this problems we are going to see in the forthcoming sessions thanks for watching Subscribe to our channel and share to your friends. See you in the next video. Bye bye.